Hello and welcome to the workshop. So today I'm doing a sort of a one day build type of uh, video. Uh, this is my trusty old Pultra uh, which is uh, a lovely little lathe. It's the Pultra 1750. Uh, perfect for clock making with a 10mm collet. Uh, it's running on an old uh, 240 volt single phase motor um, which is restricting it to a single speed. Uh, I have got uh, the ability to change the speed to a small amount on the uh, pulley here but it doesn't make a, a massive difference, there's only a single pulley on the headstock itself. So this motor has started to uh, trip out the electric so there's obviously a breakdown of insulation on the windings I would guess. Uh, that is basically writing this motor off because to me it's not, it's not worth um, investing in uh, having this motor repaired. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take this motor off and uh, take the pulley off because I'll need to reuse that and uh, this video is going to be upgrading this to a um, three phase uh, but again 230, 240 volt uh, three phase motor running on an inverter and you can buy uh, the uh, inverter matched with a uh, speed control pendant and with the motor itself. Um, I think there are various companies but I bought mine from power capacitors. So I'll just uh, whip this motor off and then uh, can get on with uh, installing the new motor. So with the motor off, uh, this is the old motor mounting plate, uh, obviously the motor was surface mounted on the, on the back, uh, but I'm actually wondering now if uh, the motor that I've ordered is small enough to actually fit underneath uh, on this, uh, uh, this board that I've got. So uh, I'll have a little look and do some measurements because that would be a much neater setup. The 1750 uh, comes with this optional plate on the back so you can have it rear mounted which is what I have had but uh, if I'm able to tuck the motor underneath then the belt can go through the bottom and uh, there's a plate which is here that can go on there and it'll be a much neater setup there'll be no belts visible at all so uh, uh, I might try and do that if I can The first snag is that the motor is in the wrong configuration. I really need the motor to be, um, unless I just turn it that way, no, there's not enough space. Uh, so I really need this, this to be on this side um, for the motor to be under slung like this. 
but that's okay because on these um, tech motors the feet are configurable um, so you can swap them around all well not all of the 90 degrees because this has to stay on here but you can uh, I think I'm right in saying this will turn um, through uh, 90 degrees uh, so if I uh, was to uh, put the feet on the top here uh, that would uh, effectively put the motor that way up uh, I can then turn this to 90 degrees this way so that the wiring is coming out here and then we've got the motor configured like that so uh, I'll give that a go and see if it does what I'm hoping So this can now become the uh, top, or the bottom, when it's the other way around. Uh, so what I might just do, so that this isn't buried tight against the uh, uh, the inside of the board, is I'll swap the uh, motor plate round as well, because that is configurable as well. So here we go, that's now the bottom. So what I will do is just to see about uh, swapping this around. Yeah, so these four screws here and this should orient uh, through 90 degrees. Exactly as hoped, so we will put this one that way round so that the wiring is coming out the back because I'll have the inverter and everything over here somewhere. Uh, So now with this hole here, because it's um, blind at the back, normally they have a captive nut here, as you may have noticed, but uh, for the blind hole, uh, what I found to do is you can either just shorten the shorten the bolt down or I just put the nut on so that it, uh, it doesn't screw down as far against it. Uh, it's uh, right or wrong, it seems to work. So that's that configured how we want it. And lastly, I will just put the motor plate back on. I've just encountered a slight um, um, 
variable question mark um, which is if I had the lathe all the way over to this side which is what I have done in the past uh, then the uh, the belt would be right up here somewhere because uh, it's right at that end of the headstock so what I might have to do is shuffle the lathe along so I'll just um, uh, have a little look and see um, see where I want the uh, the configuration of the motor and then I will probably mark it out and cut it from the top as well um, it's probably a bit easier to achieve so I think the machine's going to end up centred on this board instead of over to one side. It'll look nicest anyway, I think. Always nice to have things centre. Yeah, that'll do nicely. So the next thing will be to um, fit this pulley onto the spindle of the new motor. Now they are not the same shaft size because uh, that would be uh, too easy uh, but I don't think they're too far out and I think I just need to bore this uh, out by a small amount so I've got other lathes available to me to do that so uh, that'll be the next, the next job. This is 12 and a half at the moment and it needs to come out to 14. So uh, this is obviously metric as you would imagine on a, um, a new motor. Yeah, 14 millimeters. So I'll just uh, take this over to one of the other lathes and uh, board out to 14. I'm not going to bother broaching a keyway partly because I don't have a keyway brooch. Um, but I'm just going to uh, try and make it a nice fit. Uh, I'll take the uh, the key out and then I'll just have it so that the grub screw uh, runs down into the slot. I may need to put a little piece of um, uh, slip of brass or something for it to uh, bite against. Uh, but that should be more than sufficient for the speeds that this 
uh, lathe is going to run at and, and the power requirements. No, no need to over engineer it. Pulley is mounted, motor is reconfigured. So I think we'll just uh, screw the motor down somehow and see how we get on. So I need to mount the motor now, so I've uh, marked out the, um, the placement for the, uh, the bolt pattern for the, the foot of the motor and I've uh, got these M6 coach bolts which can go through from the, uh, from the top uh, so that the head is hidden underneath the machine itself and then these will need shortening because there's not much um, uh, clearance here for the, uh, for the nuts and for the end of the thread uh, and I've got some little uh, M6 washers as well. So. I'll poke some holes in this uh, board now and, uh, and get the motor mounted. Good, so motor is now fitted. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, just flip it back over again and, uh, uh, and check that the belt lines up and everything before I go any further. But then the next stage will be to uh, put the uh, inverter and, uh, and the other electronics in uh, to wire the motor up. Right then, so you know how it is, 
these jobs keep uh, getting bigger or more fiddly. Um, the threads in here, which I would like to just pinch it down, it doesn't need to be pulled down hard, but uh, with it being underslung like this, I don't know, it seems to be a little bit more prone to slipping around for some reason, maybe because it's not as wedged up into the corner. But anyway, um, it's got these threaded holes. I don't want to change the thread of those, uh, you know, run a tap into it or anything nasty like that. So um, uh, just trying to work out what these were and uh, I found a bit of uh, threaded rod that uh, runs in very nicely. Um, and that's uh, telling me that it's a 3 8 16. So uh, I've got a, uh, a die for that, uh, but I haven't got any bolts. So rather than making up uh, bolts, I'm just going to use some uh, metric bolts and I'm going to uh, just modify the thread. It doesn't matter that they are, um, the thread will be weakened because it's essentially like cross threaded running a, um, a die down it, but uh, uh, it's, it's just got to pinch it down a little bit and stop it from moving around is all I want it to do. Uh, so I'm going to uh, modify some, uh, um, some metric bolts, turn them into studs with um, the metric nut and a washer uh, from underneath but uh, I need to put the uh, imperial thread on, on this end just to get it into there so do that next. <laughs> So now I'll see if I can find the uh, a nice little layout for the uh, for the buttons for the uh, speed controller. So now that the machine's position is pretty much dictated, now I think the natural spot for the um, for the, the control pendant is probably back here. Uh, I like it to be on the right hand side. I think yes. I would like it to be on the right hand side and um, I've no, no longer got room for it to be right next to the um, uh, the lathe. I don't want it to be on the front. Or do I want it to be on the front? No, I don't think I do. I think we'll have it out of the way here. So I think we'll just poke a little hole for the cabling to just uh, go through neatly and then the inverter can go on the inside so uh, yeah I think that can that can live there okay Okay, so, right, cabling for the uh, pendant is coming through there, the, uh, these are the bolt holes for the machine, motor is mounted, so we just need to put the inverter in place, 
find a little home for it. Here's the inverter. So I suppose we can either put it upside down next to it like that, or I was actually thinking of mounting it on the side. I don't know if that makes much difference or not. I suppose if I mount it on the side, then uh, all I've got to do is tip the front. Oh, that is the front. Uh, right, maybe if I put it on the back, on the side like that, then if I do need to ever get to it to have a fiddle, I've just got to jack the front up slightly. Just lift, just prop the front up, and I can get to it. Um, rather than if it was mounted like this, I'd have to tip the whole thing the other way up. So yeah, I think I'm going to put it uh, give myself a little bit of room for cabling and things. Probably about there-ish, something like that. Good, good. Right, the screws. I need to decide if I'm going to keep all of this uh, cabling intact for a future occasion. Right, so these are pretty easy to wire up. They very kindly provide a, an idiot sheet with the um, uh, with the kit, which is very very clear. So all we need to do is follow the instructions, and all should be well. So after a little bit of fiddling around, I've got the uh, wiring configured now. So you have to convert it into delta from star, which is uh, across here for the two separate windings for three phase. Uh, convert it so that it's a um, um, in a delta configuration for the inverter drive, uh, and then um, hook up the cables and the earth, and that's going to run uh, into the inverter. So I'll just wire up that end now, but uh, uh, this is the um, 
the cable for the pendant, which I've deliberately left long in case I want to relocate the pendant somewhere else in the future. And the um, uh, the incoming single phase, and uh, then this is the uh, uh, the inverted drive to the motor. So I'll just uh, have a bit of a tidy up now and uh, flip it over, and we'll uh, fit the lathe on. So before I go any further, I think it's time to power up and see what happens. So it's all working now. Uh, the only thing is it ramps up really slowly. So I know there's a way of setting the parameter to uh, accelerate faster. So I'm just going to get the uh, instructions for the inverter. And I'm going to see which, here, which parameter that is to change. And uh, I'm going to... Um... Oh, hang on, we've got it here, right in front of us. So parameter 11 sets acceleration time with the motor from zero hertz maximum frequency. Default time is 10 seconds. So, program zero, uh, 11, enter. And that's set to 10 seconds at the moment, so. So that does. Right, so all that's left to do now is to uh, fit the headstock belt.
I might as well test the lathe out, making some bits for itself. So the uh, cover plate here, uh, I've got these uh, couple of screws uh, that I can use, but obviously they're far too long. So uh, we'll just uh, shorten these down a little bit. So uh, three. Right, so we've got the, uh, the lathe back in action again now, everything's all together and it's all working. Uh, now I've already set the um, acceleration time to be um, fairly slow and the deceleration, but I'd like it to be even zippier, especially the deceleration. I'd like it to be almost like an emergency stop, press the button and it just stops. Um, and also, you know, about a second to get it up to speed. So I think I put it set for three seconds at the moment. So, uh, what was our parameter? Acceleration time is program 0011. Program 00. Okay, let's try that. Okay. And I think the very last job might be to just um, put some of the rubber sheeting that I've got down here. Uh, this is where the cross side is going to get dumped all the time. So uh, uh, I'll just see if I've got an off cut that I can trim to fit in there. I just found a bit of an off cut and having trimmed it to size that can sit in there.
Okay, so there we have it, all uh, looking pretty, mounted nicely. It's all a self-contained unit now, it just plugs into a 240 volt plug. And we've got a nice, uh, nice variable speed control now, which I've not had before. These units also, flick of a switch and it will reverse. Also you can put it into jog mode, so you can just uh, pulse it on. Sometimes that's useful for things like threading, um, for backing out a, uh, a thread under a uh, reasonably controlled um, way. Anyway, big upgrade on where we were at with the old motor. It also runs so much quieter and uh, neatened everything up a little bit, lubricated the headstock, giving it a bit of a birthday and it's ready for action. Hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, remember to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you.